Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Maths channel. This is question number five for my end of topic worksheet of trig functions from my P3 collection of worksheets. And it's also question number nine from the Elmwood A collection of past paper questions, um, which is another kind of old collection like the Solomon papers. Um, question number nine A is kind of like a P2 type of question. It says show that x equals one is the solution of the equation x cubed minus x squared minus 3x plus 3 equals 0. So if x, minus, if x equals 1 is the solution of this equation, then if I substitute x equals 1 instead of x, it will make the equation true. So let's see, when you put x equals 1 in the equation, we're going to get 1 cubed minus 1 squared minus 3 times 1 plus 3, which gives you 1 minus 1 minus 3 plus 3, which is 0. So as x equals 1, Okay, um, satisfies the equation, therefore it is a solution, it is a solution, it is a solution to the equation, okay, so that's fine, it is a solution, that's fine, you don't even have to really write anything here, okay? as long as you show it equals zero. Then it says find the other two values of x which satisfy the equation. So basically what they're asking us to do here is to factorize this and find the other values of x which make this equation true. Okay, So that's what we're going to do and there's two ways we can do it. One way is by using algebraic long division which we learned in P2 and the other way is by comparing the coefficients of the terms uh, using identities which is a skill that's going to be important for you when we do P4. So I'm going to show you both ways. Um, of, of doing it so that you get uh, exposure to this identities method as well. Okay. Okay, so now um, let's start off with the algebraic long division. So we know that um, what we'll do first is I'll say let, I'll say let f of x be our function. Our function is x cubed minus x squared minus 3x plus 3. Now as f1 is equal to 0, therefore we can say x minus 1 is a factor. It's a factor. So I'm going to try and factorize this fully, then I can find what the other values of x are which make it 0. So let me use algebraic long division. So you know that x minus 1 goes on the outside, let me write it properly. Then the denominator on the outside and the numerator on the inside, nothing's missing. We've got x cubed, x squared, x, and everything's there. So x cubed minus x squared minus 3x plus 3. Okay, now I'm going to do algebraic long division and sort this out. So let me just move this thing out of the way here. Okay, so now x goes into x cubed, x squared times. x squared times x is x squared. And x squared times minus 1 is minus x squared. When I subtract these, sorry, x squared times x is x cubed. What am I talking about? Sorry about that. x squared times x is x cubed. And x squared times minus 1 is minus x squared. Now, when I subtract these, you'll notice that I'm going to get a 0. x cubed minus x cubed is 0. x squared minus minus x squared, sorry, minus x squared minus minus x squared is minus x squared plus x squared, which is also 0. So I've got 0 here. So I'm going to bring down the next term, which is minus 3x. And as there's two, two terms here, I'm also going to bring in the next term, which is plus 3. So I have, now, I'll say x into minus 3x goes minus 3 times. Minus 3 times x is minus 3x. And minus 3 times minus 1 is plus 3. Again, when I subtract these, I'm going to get no remainder. So I'm left with x squared minus 3 is my other factor. So I know x minus 1 times x squared minus 3 is what's going to give me x cubed minus x squared minus 3x plus 3. And we can check to, to make sure it's correct. x cubed minus 3x minus x squared plus 3. That is correct. So we have now um, factorized this. Okay, so we can then go on to solve the equation. Okay, so when we now know that our function f of x is equal to x minus 1 times x squared minus 3, and now we can go on to solve it. We can say, therefore, okay, when f of x equals 0, 
which is what we have to solve. X minus 1 times X squared minus 3 equals 0. Okay, so just remove this thing here. Okay, so we can then solve this. But before I go into that, what I'll do is I'll also show you how to do this in a, in a slightly different way. So we're going to solve it down here later on. But let's get to the same stage using identities. So to use identities, what you do is you say, okay, I know that x minus 1 times something gives me, well, we started with x cubed minus x squared minus 3x plus 3. Once I know one of the factors is x minus 1, I know x minus 1 times something gives me this expression that we started with. Now, if I multiply x minus 1, which is linear, by something and it gives me a cubic, well, that something must be quadratic. So it must be of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Linear times a quadratic gives me a cubic. So we can do what is called comparing the coefficients to work out what a, b, and c are. So what we can do is we can say, let's compare the x cubed terms. So the x cubed terms on the left side will be x times ax cubed, which is going to x times ax squared, which is ax cubed. There's going to be a on this side. There will be no other x cubed terms at all on the left side. On the right side, there's only one x cubed term, which is 1x cubed. So I know that a is equal to 1. So, so far, I know I'm going to have f of x equals... I'm going to have x minus 1 times... I know it's going to be 1x squared. So that's what I know so far. Okay, now I've got to find what bx is. So b is, oh, and c is. Let's, try, let's start with c, because it's a constant... Always the highest order and the lowest order is the easiest to deal with because normally there's less terms that give you those. So for the constant on the on, on the left side here, you've got minus 1 times c, which is minus c. And on the right side, the constant is plus 3. So therefore, we can say c is equal to negative 3. So I know I'm going to have a negative 3 here as well, as we can see from our first answer anyway. Now we've got to find what... Um, so what did I do? I compared the constants. Let me just call it constant because it gets confusing then. The constants. And now I can compare the x's or the x squared. It's up to me. Okay, I can do the x's or the x squared to find what b is. Let's try, let's do the x squared. So we're going in some sort of order. So x squared, x times bx will give me bx squared. So that's the left side. And you've got also minus 1 times a, x squared will give me the x squared term. So you've got x times bx, that's the x squared term. Minus 1 times a x squared, minus a, that's another x squared term, and that's it. They're the only two x squared terms that will be generated on the left side. Everything else will be x cubed or x's, or x squared, or sorry, x's or constants. On the right side, the x squared term is minus 1. Now, I already know that a is equal to 1. So I can say b minus 1 is equal to minus 1. If I add 1 to both sides, b is equal to 0. So we can say that uh, the b is 0, so it's going to be x squared plus 0x minus 3, which is x squared minus 3, which is what we found by algebraic long division. Okay, so both ways are perfectly fine for us to solve the problem. So we know that the, the one of the solutions was when x minus 1 equals 0, so x equals 1, we already know. The other two solutions which you have to find are when x squared minus 3 equals 0, in which case x squared equals 3, so x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. So those are the other two solutions. Plus or minus the square root of 3 are the two solutions that we're looking for. Okay, so that's the answer to this question. Part B. So x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. Just writing it clearly, that's all. So that's part A, sorry. That's the answer to part A. We have basically shown that x equals 1 is a solution and found the other two values which satisfy this equation. So what it has to what you have to remember is stuff from P2, which is the remainder theorem or the factor theorem, and also <clears throat> comparing identities. I showed you how to do that because that's going to come in useful when we do P4 and partial fractions, which is coming up very soon. So that's one, one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure that you remembered comparing coefficients. Normally, most people wouldn't do that. They would use long division. It seems a bit shorter. So and that's why I want to remind you of identities because you probably haven't done it for a long time. Now, question number five, part B. It says, use part A to show that tan theta equals one is a solution of this equation. 
Now, what has this equation got to do with the equation above? Well, this is what the challenge is in such questions. When they say hence, or they're telling you to use part A, you should look carefully uh, at both parts of the question. So I'm just going to bring part A, the equation down, and we can see what we're going to do. Okay, so here we have the equation from part A. I've written it underneath, or I've, I've pasted it underneath our equation. And so what we can see clearly here is you've got, if I rearrange this, I'll have tan cubed theta, okay, um, minus 3 tan theta, plus 4 equals sec squared theta. Now, what we can see is that there's some sort of similarity in some ways. You've got tan cubed theta and you've got minus 3 tan theta. You've got, like you've got x cubed, you've got minus 3x. But then you've got this sec squared theta. So what we've got to do is, the rest doesn't look the same. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to rewrite this all in terms of tan theta. So I know that there's an identity for sec squared theta in terms of tan theta. Now, if you forget what that identity is, which is very common, that's not a problem at all. As long as you remember the original identity, which is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. Now, if you want to have an identity that involves sec squared theta, which is what we want, we can divide the whole equation by what gives us sec squared theta, which is 1 over cosine squared theta. Because remember, the reciprocal is given by the third letter. So if it's secant theta, the third letter tells you what it's a reciprocal of. So I want to find um, something with secant squared theta. So if I divide 1 by cosine squared theta, that will give me a secant squared theta. But then I've got to divide every term by cosine squared theta. So you'll end up with 1, sorry, not 1, tan theta, tan squared theta plus 1. So you have tan squared theta plus 1 equals sec squared theta. So now I've got my identity involving sec squared theta and tan squared theta. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to replace tan cubed theta minus 3 tan theta plus 4 equals tan squared theta plus 1. Now let me bring everything together on one side. So you've got tan cubed theta, you've got um, minus tan squared theta, minus 3 tan theta, and you're going to have 4 minus 1, which is plus 3. Now, what we can see here is you've got something cubed, minus that same thing squared, minus 3 times that same thing, plus 3 equals 0. Okay, so we can see that these are the same, the same form. That's why it's saying use part A. So we can therefore say that if we let x equals tan theta, then we're going to get x cubed minus x squared minus 3x plus 3 equals 0. And we know this becomes x minus 1 and x minus um what was it? x minus 3, x squared minus 3. That's what it becomes. x minus 1 and x squared minus 3. Let's just to make sure it was that. Yep. Okay. So we can say that is also equal to 0. Okay. So we can now continue here. We can say that means... What does it say? Yeah. So that means we can say that x equals, x equals 1 is a solution... Therefore, as x equals tan theta, then tan theta equals 1 is a solution. Okay, so that's how you can deal with part B using part A. So we used part A how? By showing that this becomes the same exactly as the original function. Um, it's just got tan theta instead of x. So it's something cubed minus something squared minus 3 times something plus 3 equals 0. So if you make x equals tan theta, you can then rewrite this in terms of what we had above. And we knew that x equals 1 is a solution. So that, that means we call tan theta equals x. So that means tan theta also equals tan theta equals 1 is also a solution of our equation. So there we have it, the part B. Now we've got to do part C. Okay, part C says... Find all the values of theta sat satisfying the equation A, given that theta is between 0 and pi. Okay, so remember we had tan theta. 
is equal to uh, 1. And we also had tan theta is equal to root 3. And we also have tan theta is equal to minus root 3. Those were the three solutions. So tan theta equals 1. Um, inverse tan of 1 is pi over 4. Okay, put that in your calculator. Get, get pi over 4 radians. Between 0 and pi, that's the only solution. If you add pi to, to get the other solutions with the tangent, if you add pi to that, to that, you'll get the other solutions. Of course, if you add pi to pi over 4, you're going to be more than pi. And also, if you take away pi from pi over 4, you'll be less than pi. So that's the only solution from this. Then we got theta equals, um, tan theta equals root 3. Now, these are these exact values, which we should know. So we got here 2, 1, and root 3. This is our... Right angle triangle, this is the 60 degrees, which is pi over 3. And this is the 30 degrees, which is pi over 6. So we, we know that tan theta equals root 3. So the tan of an angle um, equals root 3. So it's going to be tan of pi over 3. or equals So theta is pi over 3. And if you add pi to that, or take away pi, if you, if you do pi, yeah, if you add pi to that, or take away pi from that, it will be out of the range. So that's my only solution there as well. And tan theta equals negative um, root 3. Okay, that's going to be um, when theta is equal to, well, there's no, it's going to be when it's in the second quadrant. Yeah, so it's going to be, if you find that, if you if you find this in your calculator, it's going to give you minus pi over 3. Inverse tan of, um, inverse tan of minus root 3 will give you minus pi over 3. If you don't believe me, we'll check with the calculator now. Okay, so we'll put in inverse tan of minus root 3 um, that gives us minus pi over 3 that's what the calculator gives us the principal solution now that's not one of our solutions but we can use it to generate the solutions that are in the range so we've got to add pi to this so minus pi over 3 plus pi is going to be like 2 pi over 3 2 pi over 3 so that's our solution so the solutions are theta is equal to pi over 4 pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3 those are the solutions within our range of values that we are being given and that's the answer to question number five part c for my end of topic worksheet and number nine part c from the elmer paper collection a thank you for watching and um, as i mentioned um, in my videos if you would like to see other videos which are from Elmwood A, which I don't know if I will be making anymore, so I probably won't put a playlist up for that. But any any other videos about this topic of trigonometry and solving trig equations from P3, I'll put in the playlist over here. And um, you know, if I'm going to put a card on top, taking you to some other P3 material that might be interesting for you, like a past paper, and I'll give you a subscription button over here if you want to subscribe. You can click onto that. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon.